Oh my God, thank you so much. Um, what do I press down? Is it me? Oh, great. Okay, cool. So um, I'm gonna be talking about the web, the, the new hidden secret, not so secret, everyone knows about it, but not officially released web editor. Um, so I think, first of all, this is me with my band, but um, hi, I'm Cassie. If you don't know me, um, there are a lot of familiar faces, but um, I have a background in uh, engineering and also music, and I, I got interested in um, art and technology when um, in my, I think it was like my senior year last semester of college, I took a computer music class and I learned about pure data and I was like, you can connect these worlds. And I was so excited to like be patching and everything. And so, um, that's sort of my, my background in this. And I think, I think the starting point for the, the web editor is like Lauren has done an amazing job with P5 and, um, if we look at the, the mission of the Processing Foundation and thinking about how to make um, art and technology more accessible to diverse communities, um, how, do we, how do you make a programming library accessible? And um, so for me, I think about, you can barely read this, but this is my first programming assignment ever. It's a Java program and I had to, um, I had to like think about what the maximum value of an integer is and um, thinking about types and yeah, this is not really what you think of as a basic program, is it? So um, yeah, when I first learned to program, I learned, I learned how to make command line Java applications and I think then I didn't even understand that there was something bet different between a plain text document and um, like a uh, Microsoft Word document. I like, didn't really understand what was happening. And so in this class, I had to um, like create a plain text Java file, then compile it, then and then run it and like use my command line. I like didn't really know what was happening. And it was cool because I felt like I could use my computer in a different way, which, you know, I was like, wow, like this is a whole different way of using your computer. But also all, all I could do was print commit, like make command line applications that like print out text and I would show my friends and be like, hey, like look at this thing. And they'd be like, I don't really understand like what you're doing with your time. <laughs> so, so um, it just made me, and there, the other thing was that there were so many people in that class who I felt like knew so much more than me. Like they, they had like been interacting with their computer in this way for a while. And I it was just like, I, I didn't even know you could do this. So, um, one one thing I learned is that like configuration is really hard, and it's also it's not very fun. I I don't even I hate configuration. Like I don't even like that you used to have to add the emoji keyboard to your phone keyboard. Like I I hate configuration, and it's also I mean I think it also impacts uh, accessibility, right? It's it's a first impediment. And if your first impediment is like, I don't even know how to create a plain text file, you know, like that's that's gonna you're gonna be like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. This is too this is too much. This is too much time and I can't do it. And also thinking about um, in terms of a creative practice, thinking about, you know, and when you're in, embarking on a creative practice, you want it to be like pen to paper, make something quick and easy and like not think about um, what you're doing. So this, this, this journey began with a desktop editor made by Sam Levine. I see that you're here. What's up? Um, <laughs> and uh, which, which is like an amazing starting point. But um, in this journey of accessibility, it was not, it got it got maybe 75% of the way there. It, you could load it and start writing P5 code really fast, but um, you had to download software, it, you couldn't share your sketches, and there, there are many other things. So um, I had applied for a processing fellowship in, uh, I guess 2016, and I didn't get it, but then uh, Dan and Lauren approached me with a different project, which was the which was the web editor, and so my first commit was apparently, oh, you can't even can barely read it, but it says May 2nd, 2016, initial commit. 
Um, <laughs> and so I started working on this project then. And um, as it turns out, making, making an in-browser editor that just uh, takes code on one side and renders it into a sketch in like an iframe, which is a uh, like another browser window within your browser window. It's pretty cool how that works. Uh, it's actually really easy, and I think it took me uh, like a month to do that. And um, before before I knew it, within so it started in May, and by September this was being used at um, ITP and DMA, and uh, I'd actually taught a couple workshops with it over the summer to test it out, and I, I remember teaching a workshop with it, and people couldn't even log out yet, so you can really you can really go a long way and make something usable in the internet without it having features you think of ba as basic, and so at a certain point, it became a really a real thing, and um, you get really exciting bugs, like if you log into GitHub, it logs you in as Alice and Parrish, okay, sure. Shoot. Okay, <laughs> I just talk faster because um, I have a lot more shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay. Now I'm panicking. Um, <laughs> I think I wrote a lot more on the train here. Um, so yeah, how can I skip ahead? So yeah, this like became a real thing, and I was like, oh my god, like running an open source project. How do I do this? And so one one interesting thing, and this is just what the web editor looks like. And I could I could just talk about all the features, which are not that exciting. But I think I think the most interesting thing about it is that um, you don't really think about it, and it kind of gets out of your way. And and that's really my my goal with this is for you to take it for granted and for you to be like, oh, this is a thing that exists, and I can share my sketches and um, you don't even have to think about it. And that's what I want. And so quickly, things that I have learned from working on this project, rather than me showing you all of the features, but it works. You can run P5. It's cool. Um, <laughs> um, having the, the constant user testing, like having it at NYU and UCLA and doing lots of workshops with it has been really amazing. And I've gotten so much feedback from that. And um, But it's also been extremely hard and um, uh, just like having all that feedback and being like, yeah, I know this thing is an alpha, but just like trust me, like look past all the bugs, it works, and that's been really hard. Um, but but also just like amazing, and I'm so grateful. Um, and also that uh, managing an open source project is really hard. Um, like how do you like how do you keep contributors and get contributors? How do you prioritize issues? How do you like not let this thing take over your life? And like, is there ever time to write tests? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but luckily, um, you can ask for a lot of help. And I've reached out to everyone in the world who's made an online code editor, and I know everyone. Um, <laughs> and I've reverse engineered so many things. And um, the help and support I've gotten from people more technical than me um, has been amazing. And the last people I want to thank is the processing community, who has been so great. And of course, Lauren and Dan for supporting me in all of this, and all the contributors who write code and test the editor and use it in their classrooms and report bugs. So um, thank you so much.